Hello and welcome to the Tennessee Informer. I'm your host, Dave Vance. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Tonight our show will be a little bit different. We have a special presentation for you that features me being interviewed by Dan Meredith from the Heartland Liberty Show in Nashville. We covered several topics including putting teeth in the 10th, also known as nullification, state sovereignty, and TNCSS. And last but not least, the Tennessee Informer. Dan does a great job interviewing and I got a little fired up talking about these important issues. I want to thank Dan and the crew for the opportunity to be on the show. I really appreciate it. I think you're going to like it. Have a look. In a world that's forgotten God, hasn't heard of the Constitution, can't define a woman, and sees a racist behind every tree, this is Heartland Liberty. Good evening and welcome to Heartland Liberty. I'm Dan Meredith, your host, and tonight we're going to have a special guest. But first of all, I want to go into a little bit of history of this country. We talk about the federal government pretty frequently. I'd like to tell you a story about over 200 years ago, the federal government, when our country was very young, around 1800, just a little before that, the federal government made a couple of laws, the, Sa the Alien and Sedition Acts. They dealt with some things that we're sort of dealing with now. The federal government said anybody that's an alien, not a, 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 a citizen of the U.S., we can just kick them out if we don't like to. They also said that if you're writing things or saying things about the government, we can shut you down. Well, the states had to abide by that because it was the federal government, of course. Kentucky and Virginia said, no, that's unconstitutional. Kentucky and Virginia wrote some resolutions called the Kentucky and Virginia Resolutions. Kentucky and Virginia said, these are unconstitutional. If you read through these, as I've read through them the last couple of days, very detailed, very interesting, but you'll find something that's missing there. Neither Kentucky nor Virginia said, we need to go to the Supreme Court or any federal court to find out if these are unconstitutional. They knew they were unconstitutional. They looked at it and they said, this is not lawful. And they wrote in there and they said, if we abide by these laws, they even put the words in there, they said, we become criminals because we are enforcing criminal laws. That's the way the people in the early country felt about the Constitution. Now let's go back to today. A little over a year ago in 2022, the federal government decided, the courts decided, that a law or a, a ruling, a, an opinion, Roe versus Wade, that we had lived under for 50 years, a little over a year ago, the Supreme Court said, that's unconstitutional. When was it unconstitutional? It just magically became unconstitutional? No, for 50 years, we lived under an unconstitutional opinion. People were punished. People went to jail. Laws were changed and laws were remade for 50 years until some people in black robes magically said, this opinion was unconstitutional. If we had people today like the Kentucky and Virginia legislators were 200 years ago, when Roe v. Wade was decided, they would have stood up and said, this is unconstitutional now, not 50 years from now, and they would have said, we're not going to abide by that. That's called nullification. When a state says, we're not going to listen to this, we know this is unconstitutional, and we're going to nullify that. Think about some of the laws that we're living under now. For example, the Gun Control Act of 1938, or the Gun Control Act of 1968, 
that we all look at and say these are unconstitutional and 20, 30 years from now or even three years from now, some people in black robes are going to look at and say these are unconstitutional and oh, the people that have gone to prison, gone to jail, their families have been destroyed, whoops, are bad. When are our legislators going to stand up and say these unconstitutional laws are wrong? We won't abide by them. That's the doctrine of nullification. The state can say these are unconstitutional. And as Kentucky and Virginia said, if we abide by these and if we press them on our citizens, if we enforce them, we become criminals because we're abiding by criminal laws that are against the supreme law of the land. Nullification, something to think about. There's a group in Tennessee now called Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty. Tonight we have a gentleman that's one of the members of that, in fact, the co-founder. We have Dave Vance, and Dave is here to talk to us about this idea of state sovereignty, that the states have something to say when the feds pass a law that is unconstitutional. The states have a right to declare that we're sovereign, we have something to say about laws that are unconstitutional. Absolutely. Welcome and thanks for being with us, Dave. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, going back to our early founding, you know, our Constitution, when it was created, a matter of fact, one of the first plans that they laid out in the Constitutional Convention, it was for kind of a top-down government called the Virginia Plan, where the federal government would be able to basically say, okay, this state law is invalid. And that was just rejected right off. They're like, no, we're not going down uh -huh. that road. Um, when it was all said and done, at the end of the convention, there was a lot of concern that what was created was going to create, even though, they, even though they didn't get what they wanted originally with a top-down government, which some of them wanted, uh, it, there was a lot of people who were concerned that it was still going to create too much power, too, too powerful of a federal government, mm -hmm. and that it would swallow up the states and the mm -hmm. people wouldn't have any rights. So there was a push to have a Bill of Rights added. Now, at the end of the, at the, end of the convention, there was a motion made to add it at the end of the convention. That lost. But now, now the Constitution had to be ratified by all the states. And there were still some key states, Virginia, New York, and others, that they really had concerns. And people like Patrick Henry, people like George Mason from Virginia, they were like, you know, what? This is, this is a bad idea. It could go it, wrong. It could go wrong. The they power were, could be too much control. We got to watch it. That's right. And they were very concerned about that. And even though at the end of the convention, they didn't agree to do a Bill of Rights, uh, there was enough concern that James Madison, who's considered the father of the Constitution, mm -hmm. it was his idea to kind of get this thing rolling, him and several others, and he said, okay, I guess we're going to have to do a Bill of Rights just to kind of calm the nerves on this. Uh, because even though they did get enough people to ratify it, they didn't have all the states in yet. Virginia mm -hmm. wasn't in yet, New York wasn't in yet, and several others. Matter of fact, the last state didn't join until 1790. I think it was mm -hmm. like Rhode Island. So they decided, okay, if you guys will support this in the first session of Congress, we'll propose a Bill of Rights. And that's what they did. So the Bill of Rights came about because of a fear that the federal government would be too powerful and uh -huh. that they would usurp the, the rights of the states. Uh -huh. So that's why we got the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Now, if you remember, too, in the Constitution itself, what it did was it, it gave enumerated, specific enumerated powers right. to the federal government. Right. Article 1, Section 8 lays out all the enumerated powers of the federal government. Mm -hmm. Article 1, Section 10 says the specific things that the state can't do. And the then, federal government can do, the state can't do. And, Article and that's 10. the way it's written. Right. Article 1, Section 8, federal powers. Article 1, Section 10, things, specific things the states cannot do. And, of course, most of the powers of the federal government were determined, were, uh, the intent of that was for them to deal with foreign powers, things like making war mm -hmm. and doing certain other things right. that it wasn't fit for a state to do. Right. And but then the they, state, the, the, the things they can't do, but any, if it didn't say the state can't do it, they can do anything else. Absolutely. Unless it's a restricted. Right. So we, we've got our Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments to the, to the Constitution are known as the Bill of Rights. Well, the Ninth Amendment and the Tenth mm -hmm. Amendment specifically have to do with the powers of the state 
and the powers of the people. And mm -hmm. in, in a nutshell, anything not specifically delegated to the federal government remains with the states or the people. Mm -hmm. That's where the power remains. So when you, you were referring a few minutes ago to the uh, Alien and Sedition Acts, right. and uh, one of the problems was Adams, President Adams himself, and this was just a, you know less roughly 10 yeah. years after the Constitution was right. passed. So they gave us a good document, and then they gave us a good example uh -huh. of why we need to be right. careful. I mean, yeah. here, was, here was a president who was one of the founders, and he was wanting the authority to throw people out of the country. Yeah. It had a lot to do with the, what was going on in France at the time yeah. and so on. But and this was a time when the country, as you said, was only 10 years old. Yeah, roughly. And yeah. he could throw anybody out that wasn't a citizen, which was a huge amount of people. You right. Know, well, was a lot well of, anybody actually anybody that he felt was a danger. Yeah. Anybody so he, he could felt just was a pick danger, and choose, throw them right, out. Right. Uh -huh. And then the other thing was that you couldn't criticize the president or his government. Mm -hmm. So obviously uh, Jefferson and Madison realized this was unconstitutional. So as you said, they did the article, the uh, uh, Kentucky and Virginia resolutions. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like the beginning. But if you think about it, a lot of what happened in our rev our revolution was actually nullification. You remember the Stamp Act that the British put mm -hmm. on us? Oh. Well, so what did the people do? Guess yeah. what? They didn't use anything we're, that we're, we're that, that, do it. that had to have a stamp on it. Yeah. All right. So they, that was kind of null nullifying means you make it void. Yeah. Okay. And so there's different ways you can actually do it through the legislature, or you can do it. Uh, through other other laws, other yeah. things, or just by not complying. It's, yeah. A lot of it has to do with, with non-compliance. It's interesting, some of the wording that I read in this, either the Virginia or Kentucky resolution, some of the wording was, they said, if we wait for the central government to tell us if something is constitutional or not, then basically we give up right. the concept of any state sovereignty at all, that right. pretty soon will be gone and when you think about it today that's what's happening absolutely that, that, the, that the federal government does everything right and then if if we make any move the federal government just says no yeah. we're in charge here move along yeah. well the implied task when you get the bill of rights especially with article uh, with the 10th 9th and 10th amendment the implied task was that the states were going to refuse to go along. You read the Federalist Papers, mm -hmm. it's all through the Federalist Papers, Federalist 45, Federalist 78, 85. They all talk about the states having the real power mm -hmm. and basically, hey, they're not going to comply. That was their responsibility. Yeah. So that it, it's, it's always been an implied task. The Kentucky and Virginia resolutions kind of put it on paper, but it is something you have to do. Your constitution doesn't work right if the states don't do their part, and their part is making sure the federal government stays in its lane. Right, and 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 it seems like from the beginning, as you see from the beginning, there's a uh, one of the conservative TV channels that I watch. It talks about the eleventh, twelfth amendment, where it talks about that you can't sue, people can't sue another state. Uh, the the decision was made. There was an amendment uh, that 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 individuals and can't sue another state, and then it's like, uh, as they explain that, soon after it was interpreted that well, yeah, individuals can sue some states. It was like immediately the federal courts made a decision that 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 uh, overreached, and then. The states had to come in and say, okay, no, th no, you're not going to do this. We're going to make an amendment because the first thing the federal government started doing was overreaching their power. It's like they can't right. control it. It's like I've, I've told people before, uh, the federal government is like having this giant, pardon the expression, this giant mother-in-law in, in, in D.C. <laughs> that just can't keep their hands off the states. They've got to meddle. They've got to change things. You just can't keep them away from it. So, Absolutely. Okay, we're going to come back in just a few minutes, and we're going to talk more about the uh, Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty, what you all are doing, what your goals are, and some about the, uh, the legislature and, and so far what they've done and some of the, uh, the bills that you've passed and you've submitted. So we'll be right back in about one minute.
Welcome back to Heartland Liberty. I'm Dan Meredith, your host, and we have our great guest with us this evening, Dave Vance, who is one of the co-founders of Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty. So let's start with what Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty isn't. There's a lot of kooky groups out there. Right. Are you a kooky group? No, not a kooky group. You're a group. kook. No, not a kook. You might be, you're a kook. I've known you a long time. <laughs> But this group is not a kooky group. Right. Yeah. This right. isn't this isn't a group that's going out in the woods and you know gathering up no. arms. And this isn't a group that no. says the United States government doesn't have a right to exist. It's not a right. sovereign citizen group that goes right. around with no license plate. No. When they're stopped, they say you don't have a right. You know, that's not what you're no. about. No. You're not about doing away with the federal government. You're not about secession. Right. This is not about any of this. Absolutely. This is about obeying the Constitution. Uh, Working with the uh, legislature of Tennessee, everything above board, going by the law, right? Uh, absolutely, There's yeah. We're nothing, not, nothing under under board about this. We're not secessionist, and we're not sovereign citizens. Okay, okay. but states have sovereignty, you know, and that's that's what this is all about. Remember the enumerated powers mm -hmm. and the state's implied responsibility to keep the federal government in check. So that's what this is all about. And how TNCSS came about was last year there was a bill in the legislature uh, in the House. It was House Bill 0726 by Representative Bud Halsey. In the Senate it was Senate Bill 1092 by Janice Bowling. And it was a uh, nullification and uh, restore sovereignty uh, mm -hmm. legislation. Essentially what we were just talking okay. about. And so that's this isn't something you all just dreamed of. No, no, this no, is, no, no. This has actually been this, right. in our state legislature. Right. It, and, and we had nothing to do with the creation of the bill, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and so it was making its way through the House, doing pretty good. Representative Halsey did a presentation that every kid, every college kid and every, legislature in our, every legislator in our country should listen to the presentation okay. that Bud gave, and I can't remember exactly what committee. And it was doing well in the House. On the Senate side, uh, Janice Bowling had it, and I think it went before the Judiciary Committee. And this, I'm sure this is just merely coincidence, but this was the, the day right after, you know, uh, our, our, uh, our perverted Lieutenant Governor had his little internal poll about whether or not his peers still had confidence in him or not. And uh, I'm reasonably sure she didn't have confidence in him, and somebody told me she was pretty clear about that. Mm. So I, I'm sure it's just pure coincidence that the next day in the committee that although she got a motion, she didn't get a second. Hmm. Now, so the bill's not dead. Had there been a vote and it been voted down, the bill would be dead. So, you know, I've been a big supporter of the Tenth Amendment. I, th I think the Tenth Amendment is the only way we stay together as a country. You know, I, yeah. I think there's two types of interventions that are needed for our country. Divine intervention, which you have to pray for, and state intervention, which we have to make them do. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, I was watching this bill. I was disappointed to see when it didn't get a second in the committee. But and I was talking to a friend of mine in East Tennessee, a lady named Karen Bracken. And we were talking about it, and we're like, well, this thing com comes back up next year. We really need to get people on board. We need to get people educated. We need to get them involved on this. And so once we found out that, uh, you know, she had talked to Representative Halsey, and he said, yeah, he's going to run it again, and that Senator Bowling was going to run it again, uh, she called me one day and said, hey, I've, I've set up this website, and I've started this group, Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty. You, you want to you help with it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay. So that's what happened. And, and what we're looking for as far as what somebody can do to help with this, if you if you if you got the slideshow there, that we can okay. go over a little bit. Let me see if I can find the slideshow. Uh, there's not a whole lot that can be well. Right now, we're at the stage where we want people to go to the website tncss oh, okay. dot com. There's a Substack account there, and if people will sign up on that, we need them to sign up that so we have numbers mm -hmm. to show. We need county leaders, and basically all a county leader does is sign up and try to get other people to sign up, get other people informed. Uh, it would be a good idea now to start talking to your house rep and your state senator, tell them about it, and, and get their support. We have several on our website, we have several legislators who have already signed up that they're going to support it. Um, we've got four or five different constitutional experts who are kind of our references. 
uh, one from the Tenth Amendment Center. We've got two from here inside of Tennessee, actually three from mm -hmm. Tennessee. Jeff Cobble, who helped write the legislation. Uh, we've got Joe Wolverton out of Memphis. We've got Paul Engel, I think he's in Bedford County. Pub and I will murder this name, so I'll apologize ahead of time. Uh, Publius Holda. Okay. You know, yeah. I'm sure you've heard of her. Yeah. Uh, and we have Mike Meharry from the Tenth Amendment Center. And so we feel <laughs> this is an important, important legislation. We're trying to get people to sign up educate everybody on it. And the one other thing that we see some counties doing already, uh, Jefferson County already had their county commission pass a resolution in support of this bill, in support of House Bill 0726 when it comes back. Now, when it comes back this session, it could have a different number, okay? Both the House and Senate bills may end up with different numbers. Um, but that's the main focus is get people informed about it, get them to talk to their legislators about it, tell their friends about it, sign up, and once it is filed and starts going through committee, that way we'll have a big list that we can reach out through the county leaders and say, hey, it's going to be in this committee this time. These are the people on the committee we need you to call, email. If you can show up, that's great as well. Okay. So that's the main focus of TNCSS. Another one of the goals we have is, of course, uh, the bullion depository and uh, gold and silver okay, as legal, me, as legal you tender. Had, you had a couple of things here. Uh, We've I sort of flew through this. Do you, you want to look at the slides? Sure. I think, you can I think we just there. talked about some of that. Let's go to the slides. Okay. Uh, first slide here. There's that. Just putting teeth, teeth in, in the, the tent. That's that's the goal. Got created. I think. Right. You, anything else on that? Yeah, I pretty much we, covered all of okay. that. Now, I do want to say one thing though. You know, you have to put you have to put teeth in the tent. Nullification. It's not a theory. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is a responsibility of our state government. Now, apparently they agree with me because, or at least a good chunk of them agree with me. I think it's on the next slide here. In 2021, October of 2021, while we had all the COVID garbage going on and all the federal overreach then, uh -huh. they did a joint resolution, uh, a Senate Joint Resolution 9005. Mm -hmm. And which basically they said, hey, look, we take an oath to defend the Constitution. We retain all the power that's not given to the federal yeah. government. Yeah. You know, all the un if it's not enumerated and given to the federal government, we retain it. Mm -hmm. And we're letting you know, federal government, that we have the right and responsibility to nullify your overreach. Yeah. And we're not limited to just going to the federal court and begging the federal court. Right. Uh, you know, to see things our way. Yeah. Now that was a resolution passed. I mean, the, ma the majority leader in the Senate was the sponsor, and in the House, the Speaker was the sponsor. Almost every Republican, House and Senate, supported that bill. That, right. Well, that resolution. Of course, yeah. the resolution has no teeth. Uh, so they've already said they have this right, right and responsibility. And what HB 0726 does is it really just creates processes for doing that. Okay. It's not legislation to create nullification. Uh, right. It's okay, we already have that. This it creates some different processes. I don't know if you right. can pull that so, up. So the idea is if everybody agrees that we can nullify, then how do we do it? You, they can't just walk through the hall saying, we're going to nullify, we're going to nullify. They've got to know, here's the step <coughs> we're going to do to nullify. Well, and then, we, 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 we wanted to create something with, or well, the, well, I say we. Yeah. The legislation creates multiple ways of doing it, okay, and that's why it's important because, like say, I say, I'm glad they passed the resolution. I'm glad they said that they believe they have that right and responsibility, but we need some teeth here, uh -huh. and I don't want to just leave it to... Okay, they've said it, but they haven't done anything yeah, yet. Yeah. And There's so, if you have multiple processes, one of the one of the processes is that the um, you know the governor yeah. could say. If you want to go back to the computer, you, yes, this is section can, nine here. If you can pull them up there, that'd be great. If I can read that, so this okay. is. Let me see if I can uh, blow, blow it up a little bit. Okay. So this is under section nine of the bill, House Bill zero seven two six, Senate Bill ten ninety two. And these are the different ways. The governor may, by the governor's own executive authority, issue an executive order nullifying the same, whereby all executive departments of the state are bound by said order. Now, understand, this is legislation. So we're laying out these different methods. That doesn't mean all of them are going to survive intact, okay? But we've got to have something coming right. out of this. Yeah. 
Another one is any member of the General Assembly may introduce a bill of nullification in the General Assembly. And for any such proposed bill of nullification, the bill is not subject to debate or passage in committee. And that's key because the committees are a lot of times where bills, good bills, okay. go to die. And proceeds directly to the floor of each Right, house. absolutely. So that's huge right there. Yeah, and, big. And there's some other things on there, but we can skip down to the next one here. Okay, I think. Three? Yeah, three. Okay. Any court operating under the authority of the Constitution of Tennessee may render a finding or a holding of nullification in any case of which it otherwise has proper venue and jurisdiction, wherein the parties to said case will, upon final judgment, be bound thereby in the same manner as in other cases. So the courts, uh -huh. a combination of ten counties and municipalities may through action of the executive or through the action of a majority of the governing legislative body submit a petition of nullification to the Speaker of the House with a copy to the Office of the Attorney General and a reporter. Huh. And upon satisfactory proof the said petitions are valid, the Speaker of the House shall proceed to introduce the bill and follow the same methods and protocols as described in Subdivision mm -hmm. 2. And then oh, wow. a signed petition of 2,000 registered voters of this state may submit a petition of nullification of the Speaker of the House with a copy. To, and, and that goes through the same process. Now, So this is a federal law and 2,000 citizens can sign a petition and send it to the state government. If it's an unconstitutional federal law. And it's not, yeah, just, right. not yeah. just a federal law. It could be a federal regulation, an executive order, a court opinion, whatever. So this gives some power to the people Absolutely. to now, say I, I, that I, is not right. Right. You know, I don't know if that number, that low number of 2,000 uh -huh. will stay intact. They might jump that up there. Any of these things could change. But at least, whatever the number is, it gives the people some power to say that is not right. And, and the important thing about this isn't that the 2,000 or 5,000 or whatever doesn't change that law in Washington, it says it's unconstitutional, and we don't give a flip what people in Nevada do. Absolutely. We're not abiding by it because, remember in Kentucky and Virginia res resolutions, what they said is, if we impose this in our people, we become criminals. Become complicit, and if the yeah. rest of the people in the United States want to be criminals, that's on them. We're not going to do it. Absolutely. Because that makes us criminals if we abide by a criminality or a criminal law. So this is this is big. That's great. Yeah, it's very so, important. Very yeah. important. And okay. we're hoping that other uh, counties will pass the, uh -huh. uh, uh, the resolution like Jefferson County did. And we have that resolution on our website. Yeah. Uh, we've got some good information on the website. There's, there's a lot of good information. on. I encourage everybody to go look at the website. Okay. We'll come back and look at that website. Fat chance this is going to happen in Davidson County with our uh, representatives, but who knows? Maybe they'll all go out and get drunk one night and <laughs> say, hey, this is a good idea. Let's do this. Let's be responsible uh, conservatives. Okay, let's go and we'll be right back a minute or so and we'll talk some more about nullification. Welcome back. I'm Dan Meredith, host of Heartland Liberty, and tonight we have with us Dave Vance, co-founder of Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty, and we're talking about the very interesting topic that many people have not, never even heard of, the topic of nullification, that as was said in the 
Tennessee and Virginia resolutions back in 1890 or 1798 that if the states don't have a right to stand up to the federal government, then the states lose their identity and then it becomes one, just one big country with no states. And the United States of America were founded as the United States of America not just a country. We're not like France or Germany or Italy or whatever. We are a union of sovereign states. That's why when you go from state to state to state, you have different laws. You have different laws for different things. Uh, that, that's why when you go from one place to another, if you're a realtor and you move from Tennessee to uh, uh, Washington State, you've got to study all new laws because you're in a different state. You like you're in a different country. You know, you talk about the United States, and then we have a Secretary of State that goes to another country. That's what states meant in the founding. It meant different little countries, and we're the United States of America. And we were intended to have sovereign states that had the ability to create laws, and the Constitution said, the Tenth Amendment, anything that is is designated a power for the federal government is federal but anything else is left to the states like maybe the department of education things like that those are state things so we're going to we're going to talk some more with dave vance tonight about this concept of nullification and state sovereignty thanks for being here dave yeah thanks so for having me let's move on and talk more about the whole concept of state sovereignty i think we were going to maybe go to uh talk maybe about the tncss and what the website or yeah i'd like to gonna? look at the website let's look at if we could. let's look at the computer and look at the website see what's available yeah. there and so there's quite a bit of information on here there's uh you know articles about uh nullification, there's doctrine of lesser magistrate, doctrine of interposition, the supremacy clause, and misconceptions. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's one of the big problems. People, they read a supremacy clause, and they forget mm -hmm. there's some key words in there. It's not it, the, the federal law is supreme to everything else. It's, it's, it's laws in pursuance, the Constitution and laws made in pursuance thereof. That's right. It's not the Constitution and all federal laws. It's right. the Constitution and laws made pursuant thereof. Right. So and if that, they make a law that's not constitutional, it means null and, squat. Null and void. Yeah, it's, and void. it's not a true law. But most of your lawyers and most people will tell you, well, no, it's federal law. It trumps state law. Federal law. That's, yeah. that's garbage. Yeah, we uh, have this. Uh, don't make a big, don't make a federal deal out of it. What does that mean? Oh, it's it's supreme. It's it's bigger right. than anything else. So that's a huge yeah. misunderstanding, and uh, yeah. it's a problem, uh, along yeah. with the idea that the court gets to be the final word on anything. Well, if you think about that, if the court is the final word, then none of the other rights listed in our Constitution mean anything. Yeah. Okay, if 5-4 if mm -hmm. Supreme Court decisions were intended to decide our rights and freedoms, then this whole, the rest of the Constitution is a joke. Yeah, you know, what people talk today about, uh, I remember in one of the northern states, there's a big deal about there's an election, and oh man, we hope the conservative wins because that'll tilt the court this way, and if the liberal wins, it'll court tilt the court that way, and then all the decisions shouldn't matter right if a law is if this law is made you read the law you know what it says but we're we're just transfixed today on well our court is liberal our court is conservative what difference does that make if they make a law and the law says something you read the law but we've got these justices up there so you've got the liberal justices the conservative justices so what difference does that make and it really does make a difference because they don't, they don't really interpret the law. They get up there and they say, hmm, what, what do I think this ought to mean? Yeah. And then they judge what it means. And, right. it, and it shouldn't be that way anyway. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't have to go and have them tell us what the law says. Yeah, well, you've I got mean, the plain language of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, you know, there's, as far as original intent, uh -huh. It's pretty easy to figure out original intent on yeah. a lot of this. I mean, you just you can look at the notes from the convention, the Federalist Papers, mm -hmm. even the Anti-Federalist Papers, which, by the way, I would, I would encourage everybody, do your own research on this, not just the issue of nullification, but everything having to do with the Constitution. Yeah. Do your own research, read the Federalist Papers, 
read the Anti-Federalist Papers. Uh, yeah. The Anti-Federalists were spot on about a lot of their fears about what uh, our country has become. Right. And like I say, part of that fear was why we got the Bill of Rights. Uh, you know, some of the people at the time said, you know, it's not a good idea to list your Bill of Rights because right. some people will say, well, if you list it, if you don't list something on there, then they're going to say, oh, well, it's, See, not, listed, it's not protected, so, uh. you know, it's open to us. But let's remember, too, the states created the federal government. Okay. We forget that. Yeah, they created, the federal government didn't create we states. We think that states are the children and the federal government is the parent. It's the other way around. And yeah. we've got the children uh, ruling the parent now. Right. And that's not the way it should be. So if you, the, the or average person who believes the supremacy clause makes all federal laws supreme mm -hmm. rather than laws right. passed in pursuance there of the mm -hmm. Constitution, and or every Supreme Court decision, then I don't know why you bother believing you have absolutely any rights whatsoever in the Constitution. Yeah. And that basically, like you said, it just makes the state, they're just a slave to the federal government. Right, yeah. Now, so we've got, you know, our state has said the right thing two years ago. Hopefully we get this legislation passed and actually start putting some teeth in the tenth. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm hoping. You, you mentioned something uh, just a few minutes ago, the doctrine of the lesser magistrate, the doctrine of interposition. Most people have never heard of that. I heard about it a few years ago. That's really interesting. The doctrine of the lesser magistrate, what does that refer to? Well, a, a lower level elected official or appointed official or of the case, he still has a responsibility if the next higher level, which that, mm -hmm. let's clarify, the federal government is only supreme in the powers that the Constitution gives to right. it. All right. So, but when a, even at the state level, mm -hmm. let's say the state was doing something to violate your constitutional rights according to the state of uh, Tennessee's Constitution, which, oh, by the way, it does, mm -hmm. uh, then your county legislative body should. Right. Perfect example was during the scandemic, okay? Uh, right. You had some county mayors who were yeah. like, no, we're not, you know, I don't yeah. care what Bill Lee says. Yeah. We're not going to do this. You've got the we state. Don't, yeah. We don't. You've got a county mayor. Right. And you got the people. Right. So this lesser magistrate in the state, right. his job is to protect you right. from the people above. The yeah. state protects you from whoever. Right. Theoretically, it, the federal government. It, but it, And give you an example. So in, in Tennessee, so in Tennessee, the counties are a creation of the state, mm -hmm. unlike yeah. in the federal government where the states created the federal government. Yeah. So the counties, they don't have quite the authority, but a county mayor, a county official, he still takes an oath to the state mm -hmm. constitution. Mm -hmm. So if the state is violating that constitution and violating people's rights, that's what he should do. He should right. interpose between them and say, no, yeah. you, you, you can't do this. And, We're not and gonna I do that. just so happened last night to go to an event where Glenn Jacobs was speaking, you know, the mayor of Knox County. Right. Knox County has a, a liberal commie city. Well, and then the county. Every city is, is liberal. County, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. The difference in Nashville is they scrunched them together in the 60s. So we just have a metro government. Over there, they still have a separate county and city. Well, the county mayor is a ex professional wrestler, right. Kane. Right, right. He's this big old dude. Yeah. And he talked to us last night about how. He lives in Tennessee. He's glad Tennessee is conservative. And he said, you know, when this scandemic came by, he said, the state or, or the federal government was telling us that we have we have mandated that people have to do things. And he said, I looked at it and said, we can't do that. We can't tell somebody they've got to close right. their business. Right. That's not something that we can do. And so that's sort of like the idea of that lesser magistrate. He was telling people, we can't do that. And uh, so I thought about him when, when we mentioned that lesser magistrate. And then uh, Andy Ogle was another right. one, that, another yeah. mayor of a county yeah. that said, you all can tell me that I have to shut down the businesses in my county. I'm not going to do it, and you can take me to jail. And Glenn Jacobs was the other county mayor that says, I'll go with you because right. we're not going to do it. So, yeah. And that's the responsibility of people that are in, that are in power right. over us. They're supposed to protect us Absolutely. from the higher powers.
Yeah. So, okay, so uh, the sovereignty, supremacy clause, uh, anything else on the webpage? Or? Um, if you look under bonfires of sovereignty, that's okay. where you can find, if anybody okay. wants to go look at the resolution that uh, Jefferson County passed, their county commission. Now, you know, it's, it's one thing to have your county GOP pass a resolution, but I guarantee you your county uh, commission passing a resolution has a whole lot more teeth. Uh, we, we'd like to get both, but I really encourage uh, everybody to go to under there where it says Bonfires of Sovereignty oh, on the side. I'm clicking. It's not going. It's not anywhere. working. Okay. Well, it'll pull up resolutions. It'll okay. pull up the Jefferson County resolution written by the uh, chair of the GOP there, David mm -hmm. Seal. I think he's a former, former county commissioner as well. Excellent, uh, excellent resolution. Uh, there's one. There's another one on there that I wrote based on his, and really the only difference is. I included the fact that our state has already said we have a right and a responsibility to nullify because I think people need to be reminded. If, if you go to your county commission and you're telling them, hey, look, guys, states already said they have this right and this responsibility. Mm -hmm. All this legislation does is create processes. Okay. And so I think that helps a lot of people. Because if you think you have to sell your county commission on supporting creating nullification, no. You're saying, look. This is something good the state has already said they believe. Uh -huh. These are some processes. And it, it really helps if we get a lot of county commissions to do similar resolutions. I think that will help the, the, the bill's chances so of getting did through. did you say the resolution that the count, that, that, that county sent is on the website? Someplace? Yes, it's, it's under, under, if you go bonfires? under Bonfires of Sovereignty. Okay, and it's not, I couldn't click it's not it now. Okay. So, but is is that so? Is that a letter, or I'm wondering? Is it, there? A, it says resolution. You'll see one. It says from, from uh, Jefferson County, written okay, by David Seal. Okay, so someone, Seale. another county, could take that as sort of a template, fill in their county. Yes, he's got the actual signed copy is posted there, and then a template that oh, everybody okay. so can just cut and paste in there. Cut and paste and send. Absolutely. So you could take yep. your template. You know, yep. Davidson County commission they could do it if they decided to but right. any other smaller county if they want to take that template and send yeah, it and in. we have GOP examples on there as well I mean okay. we know the Dems aren't going to do it but and we do have GOP individuals could do it also if they want to okay right well that sounds great okay well let's come back in uh, the next uh, segment I think it's the last segment what time yeah it's the last segment we'll come back and talk more about this and then go into uh, uh, our last segment talking about I like to talk about some of the leadership and then how people can uh, get involved and then also we want to talk a little bit about your show you've got a very successful uh tv show also a uh, uh, webcast pot, webcast webcast so we'll be talking about that we'll be right back And welcome back to Heartland Liberty. I'm your host, Dan Meredith, and we have Dave Vance with us here tonight from Tennessee Citizens for State Sovereignty. Very interesting show about a topic that I've been looking at for quite some time, and I think one that we really need to take advantage of. Uh, it's, it's, it will be good to have our legislators to really look seriously at this. And we talked about, as we close out the last segment, what you can do. Get your county, uh, your county uh, 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 politicians uh, councils to write letters to the state and also individuals. So you can go to the website there, tncss.weebly.com, and then look under Bonfires of Sovereignty in the bottom left. This pop up will get out of my way. Uh, Bonfires of Sovereignty, and it's got some templates and a letter there also. Okay, uh, Dave, so your organization, do you have any idea how large I know you've been building here, how large it is, how many people, or? 
I don't have a current number. Okay. Uh, I know we need more. Okay. Uh, we've got about, I think, 17 or 18 county leaders. And okay. like I say, a county leader, mostly what we ask them to do is get other people to join the substack, sign on to the substack, because that's going to be our main form of communication during okay. session. Uh, and then try to talk to their state rep and their senator, get them to sign on, agree to it. We'd like them for them to sign on to the site. We do have several legislators who've already signed on to that. Uh, but just start kind of prepping the ground now uh, so that when session hits and the bill starts going through committee, we've got a lot of people that, that can call okay. and put pressure to, to get this thing through. Okay. So if someone wants to sign up as a county leader, they can go to the web page if you want to go back there. Tennessee uh, County Leaders, and then down here it says show your support. Here's yep. a primary job of a county leader. One yep. leader in every county right. to register 100 people. And then you're just trying to get as enough people to... to uh, uh, back this, there's a Tennessee TNCSS Substack. Yep. Uh, I just missed on the Substack thing. All of a sudden, one day, Substack was something, and I'm like, I don't even know what this is. So right. Hoover invented the Substack. Uh, they got out ahead of me. Yeah. So then there's county leaders, Karen Bracken. I heard Karen Bracken. Well, Karen is name. actually the founder. Yeah, Karen is yeah, the founder. She started it. I'm the co-founder, but she covers down on Sullivan County. I cover down on Stewart County. Uh, Karen is. She was really involved with the Common Core stuff. Uh-huh. Fight, fighting the common core, not promoting it a few yeah. years back. And uh, Agenda 21, Agenda okay. 2030. I get uh, some of her uh, yeah. emails Well, she and has stuff. a Substack account She's as well. She's really, really active. I uh, tried to investigate her recently and find yeah. out who who this person is because she's really really out in front of everything. Pretty much a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, she's got, and I, I looked to find out Sullivan County. I thought, well, maybe she's close by. I want to meet this woman, and she's like as far away from yeah. the, uh, Nashville as you can get up in yeah. the corner, close Absolutely. to like yeah. Bristol in that area. So, I'd like to meet her someday if she's ever in this area. So, right, she's, and I'm sure she probably will leave for legislation at some point. Very in time. active, uh, but there's a lot of people here. So, uh, if you want to get involved. Uh, you can go to the web page. If you click on the uh, anti-commandeering doctrine, if you could. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now, now this I is something. I realize you click, and it's below, so that's why okay, I wasn't yeah. finding things. Okay, and here's. Here's the thing on the anti-commandeering doctrine. Now, I don't like to say, well, the courts have upheld something, but the truth is they have upheld this, that a state can, right now, and this just proves that we do have some sovereignty, they have upheld it throughout pretty much our history that the federal government cannot make a state use its resources for a federal program. Oh, now, okay. I think they, they, they cheat on that in some ways. Uh, in my opinion, for instance, a Supreme Court opinion several years ago is why when the children of illegals come here, we're forced to teach them in our schools, even though they're here illegally. Uh -huh. That was a Supreme Court opinion. I think the Supreme Court has been one of the. They've been. They've really hurt our country, uh, but the other side of that is our states have allowed it. You know, yeah, our right. states have been complicit by allowing the federal government. And a lot of that yeah. has to do with money. If we had used nullification long ago, the state support the state the Supreme Court would have been reined in. Yeah. So they, if they were making their decisions, they would sit there in their little private room and they would have thought, you know, if we do this. Those people are going to nullify it, so we don't need to do this. I right. think that would have reined them in so they wouldn't be doing all of these crazy things because yeah. they would know we got, we've got we got some states out here that aren't going to put up with this kind yeah. of stuff. Well, And if you think about it, some of the most controversial things and most divisive things in our country have been based on Supreme Court decisions. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, all of a sudden, Congress becomes your local school district uh -huh. when they say you can't have prayer in school. Okay, it says Congress shall make no law. Somehow that translates to your local school district. Uh -huh. Can, yeah. and, and, and in this day and age, I'd be afraid to have any, you know, I'd be afraid, to, depending on where you live, to have any school officials lead a right. prayer. But um, that, should, that should not have been a decision come down from the federal government. Our state right. should have ignored that. Yeah. Same thing with Roe v. Wade. That was never a state issue. Marriage was right. never a state issue. Yeah. Now, you know, this, Ob Ob I never can pronounce it, Ob Obergefeld or whatever. A few whatever. years ago, then all of a sudden, yeah. marriage that's been defined as a certain thing right. since the beginning of time. Yeah. That's like my, my mother's brother can't be called my aunt. <laughs> He's an uncle. That's right. And so if you decide, well, okay, from now on, my mother's brother can be called my cousin, my aunt, whatever. No, that's my uncle. That's yeah. what he is. Marriage 
has always been a man and a woman. You can't call right. it right. something else. And, and think of what we've already accepted. And for those who those people out there will say, well, you know, nullification is just not practical. Mm-hmm. You know, we just can't do this. That's not okay. Look what we've allowed to happen. Anybody think it's going to get better? We're not going to yeah. vote our way out of this. You know, a lot of people are putting a lot of stock in 2024. You know, okay, so let's assuming Trump, mm-hmm. and that's who I'll support, but let's assume yeah. that Trump is not is allowed to actually win, uh-huh. they, that, that they don't kill him, mm-hmm. okay? He's got four years. You are not going to unscrew this country in four right. years. And you okay? get four we, years. We've got 100 years of leftist takeover yeah infiltration of all of our right. institutions. And he's there in Washington right. with all these people surrounding him yeah. and he's trying to do stuff with people that are fighting him and Tooth cheating and, and screwing him from all sides and he's going to fix it? No. We, we yeah. have to fix our states. We have to make our states stand up. That is the only way I see this country staying together. Like I said, divine intervention, state intervention. And you know, I'm a, a big supporter as you are of the Second Amendment. I'm mm-hmm. all for it. I believe it's necessary and may become real necessary in the not too distant future but here's the bottom line it's going to be 10 or it's going to be two you can follow that up with your favorite adjective if you like but the point is 10 is a much better option for everybody yeah, okay right. and if yep. we could if we could just convince our states to say hey just tell them no and you know the other thing i always hear about well you know for instance in our state right now they're having this discussion about mm-hmm. uh should we stop Schools? taking federal education yeah. Well, number okay. The only thing they should be computing is okay of the garbage that we take from the feds. What would we do? How much of that would we do if it was just our tax dollars? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if we're not, we wouldn't do it. So we don't need to worry about it. We can't afford to keep our kids in this system. We have to get our kids out of this poison system uh-huh. that is our federal education. But the other thing is this: our federal government economically is a Titanic. Mm-hmm. And we're all, you know, lifeboats yeah. do no good if they stay tied yeah. to the boat that's going down. Yeah. So we need to cut that as much as possible. Right. And instead of staying with it, because it's going to pull us down. Yeah. So this thing of, well, can we afford to? We can't afford not to. Right. I saw today there's a bunch of them. parents down there protesting that we're gonna we're gonna give away all that federal money. Like yeah. we give it away, we still have the choice to do everything that right. they're doing. We can, we just pay yeah. for it ourselves, and if there's stuff we don't want, we just toss it out. We have the choice. Right. But I think it's interesting that you talked about this Titanic. We interviewed, and I know you all don't stand for secession. We interviewed the guy in Texas, the head of the Texas, the Texas group that's wanting to right. secede, and he said, "You at you just think about what's going on in the U.S. today. Right. The the fiscal irresponsibility the the debt were rolling up all right. of the the crazy things that we're doing with with immorality and everything and think if you were a country outside of us and you were asked would you like to sign on to this <laughs> yeah. what country would say oh yeah sign me up yeah. sign me yeah. up i yeah. would love to take a portion of that you know 30 trillion or whatever give me a portion of that and he <laughs> said and their view is, why would I want to stay here when nobody else wants right, to get in right. here? And Something as you else. said, we're just, we're, we're just, we, the states have got to be, that's the one way to do it, to right. stay together, is for some states to say, we, we've we got to, the states are the parents, the federal government's the child, we've the, got to be able right to now. spank the child. Absolutely. And say, we're not going to let you do this. So there's something else, and you don't have to pull it up, but it is on the website. I also do a Monday uh, a webcast every Monday called the Tennessee Informer, and s- several of the shows have to do with this issue of nullification. So, for instance, I have Bud Halsey on there. If you want to go see the interview with Bud Halsey, uh, if you want to see the interview with Jeff Cobble, who helped write the bill, he's on there. I had an interview on there with uh, Joe Wolverton, and he's a, an expert on the Constitution. And we talk about nullification and, mm-hmm. and, and, and state powers and the limited government. I talk about that with him. There's a guy named Paul Engel down in uh, Bedford. Matter of fact, he's got a, his, the link is on our site, theconstitutionstudy.com. 
Um, and this guy is somebody who has studied the Constitution and knows it really well, as, as does Joe. Joe writes for several national publications as well. Both of these guys have written books. Mike Meharry from the Tenth Amendment, his interview is on there. So those well, are good great. interviews to go on yeah. and, you know, plug my show a little bit. The, uh, yeah. the Tennessee Informer, got, every, every Monday there. night uh, at 7 p.m., it's, it's on YouTube. So it's just tninformer.com. And I have different guests. It's not all nullification all the time. Uh, I had Robin Steeman with Moms from Liberty last week. I see Robin there. Um, I'm going to have, I had uh, Seth Griffith with Aerial Recovery on uh, mm -hmm. this past Monday. I've got Carol Swain coming up this, this coming Monday. I've got some other Great people guests. lined up. Uh, I, hey, I, I'll, I'll say this. I, I think I've, I've been doing this since June. I, I have as good a guest as you'll find anywhere. Uh, in Tennessee, in my opinion. I, I think yeah. I've had some really you've good guests got, on you've there. You've got some people we would love to have. You know, Richard Archie? We've had yep, Richard, I've had Richard. Richard. I've had John he's Harris. Great. Yeah. yeah. And you've got you every week. That's, that's <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. I usually let them do most of the talking. Uh -huh. So I, I don't yeah. do a lot of solo on that. I do a little bit, but not a whole lot. Great, great speakers. Audrey Gomez. Yes. Yeah. Yep. She does a great job. Yeah. Clay Doggett. We yep. tried to get Clay. Clay, if you're listening, come on. <laughs> So, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, been hearing about and uh, and keeping up with your show. That's one of the reasons we wanted to have you because I know you're doing such a good job. And I've known you for years, Dave. You've oh, been yeah. active in uh, in especially in Tennessee firearms, which uh, we try to plug them and get John yeah, in here absolutely. all the time. Yeah. This is I tell people Tennessee firearms is what the NRA ought to be. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, and, and John and Richard, those guys, they spend a lot of their time and mm -hmm. money. I mean, it's not an NRA deal where where these guys are making money. If right. anything, yeah. it's costing them money. Yeah, I think uh, John's salary is about zero. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and Richard's is less than that Richard's, as much as he travels. Yeah, as much as he travels. So, yeah, they do a great job. And if you're interested in firearms, look up Tennessee Firearms. They Absolutely. They are, are great. So, Absolutely. So, Dave, uh, thank you for being here. You're doing a great job. I know you've got a lot of irons in the fire. I know you're doing this thing on Monday night. You do that uh, every Monday night. Yep. And I know that's a lot of work because you do it. You don't have a crack crew like I've got. Well, you. no, I've got a producer. I got a, I've got a great producer. With, okay, yeah. he used to. He's done some work professionally, yeah. and he does other shows as well. So okay. all I do is send the. I get the guest. I ask the questions. I send in the uh, teleprompter notes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, other than that, he's he's the tech guy. I'm not a oh, tech wow. guy. I can barely use a cell phone. Oh, okay. So he does all that. He does a great job. Yeah, well, you do you do a good job, and I can see from the website it's uh, some real good uh, graphics and everything. So, so keep it up. I mean, we need more. We've got. I'm amazed. We found out that there's there's like 15 or 20 different like podcasts and TV shows and stuff around here. I mean, it's burning the place up trying to get the word out to people. We need more people to understand what's going on because the left is going to oh, yeah, they're kill not, us. They, they, the left never sleeps. cage our young people. So a Absolutely. Well, hey, thanks for having thanks, me on. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Heartland Liberty, I'm Dan Meredith. Thanks for being here.